Hello, welcome to a, um, I suppose, a somewhat unusual video for me. Um, I want to dedicate this video to this director right here, Werner Herzog. This is the uh, the BFI Blu-ray collection, uh, consisting or, or containing 18 films from this uh, great German director, born in 1942, I think, early 40s. So he's been he's been working for a long time, and I've been a fan of his. Um, well, I'm, I'm gonna go through my history with him. I'm, I'm, this is gonna be a slightly rambly video, but what, what, I, I bought this. I, I've been a fan of him of, of him f since 2012 at least, uh, and I bought this uh, not too long ago. And I finally sat sat down uh, several months ago now, but uh, finally sat down and started to work my way through this box set. And I saw certain films for the first time and and others for the second time. Um, and there, there's plenty of movies here that I had never seen before, uh, a few that I had seen before. But I realized how, how much I love this, this director, and I've been a fan of him before, like I said. And before I get to this uh, collection, and I have some other stuff that I bought recently as well, I'd like to sort of go through my history with him and to show my collection and, and what I have before. Uh, what I have, you know, what movies I have, my my Bern Herzog collection. Uh, so I'd like to do that before I get to this. Um, so the the first thing that I, I I think this must have been the first thing, maybe along with the next one, I'll I'll, I'll show you. But this was probably the first thing that I bought. Uh, Herzog Kinski. So he's wor worked a lot with uh, Klaus Kinski, and. This I bought this I I, I don't know exactly but it, it it has to have been 2011 or maybe 2012 and um, I had heard such great things about movies like Aguirre, The Wrath of God and Fitzcarraldo and so I was really curious about this German director and so I bought this and I I wouldn't say that I was disappointed but I don't think that I was quite ready for some of these movies for his sort of sensibility or for his um, style. He has a, I think that's why one of the reasons why I like him so much. He doesn't seem to have the capability to compromise. Like he 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 has always done things his way, which I think is pretty astounding for somebody who's who's had a, who's who, who's had a career for as long as he has had a career. I mean, he's made films um, since he was in his twenties, early twenties. So for well over fifty years, he's made films, and I can't. I, I know his filmography well. At this point, and I can't think of. Uh, well, I haven't seen quite all of them. I, I've, I'm nearing that point, but th there are a few documentaries and shorts, and uh, some of his American movies that I haven't seen yet. But I, I can't really think of a film where you can't tell that it's his movie. There's not a lot of examples of that. He has always done his thing, made movies his way, and maybe the fact that he seems to be a little bit insane. Maybe, maybe that helps being a filmmaker. Um, he's not afraid to do things his way. If there's something he wants to do, there are so many great quotes from him. Um, I think he said, "If if a film would require me, I mean, I, I'm rephrasing, but if if a film would require me to go down to hell and wrestle the devil, then I would do it." So there's a, there are a few things that he would not do for a film, for a project that he feels passionate about, and I, and I I, f I think that shows with films like Fitzcarraldo and Aguirre. Uh, they're they're insane movies. They have to be the work of a, a person who is pretty nutty, and I think that helps. I I think that increases. Well, I think that helps him out uh, in his job. <laughs> Because uh, few people would go through making movies like that, and uh, well, I'm, I'm not really gonna tell the story of, of 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 all the movies, but but this this box set that I, I I don't I think the first one that I saw must have been Fitzcarraldo, and I certainly liked it, uh, but I I didn't love it. Uh, Aguirre I remember not quite understanding. Uh, Nosferatu I actually never saw, I never got to that until this, which I'll get to. Uh, Wojciech, Cobra Verde. I, I never saw Cobra Verde either. I did watch Wojciech and I, th I thought that was okay. And I watched My Best Fiend, which is a documentary about uh, Werner Herzog and um, 
Klaus Kinski's working relationship and, and perhaps their their personal re relationship as well. It's been a while since I saw it. I remember that it was a really good documentary and uh, that's sort of my reason for keeping this box set because I haven't been able to, well I, I, I this is the only place that I that I own my best fiend. I haven't um, I don't know if this is available anywhere else. It probably is but it's the only um, copy that I have of it so it's a good reason to, to keep this, to hold on to this. Um, so yeah, this was the first my first experience with the Werner Herzog and I I was definitely intrigued but I wasn't quite ready so I put this aside and it took until when I bought this uh, many years later um, before I actually rewatched them but I'll, I'll get to that like I said. Um, along with that or pretty um, simultaneously or close to each other I, I got this box set which I believe has been out of print for a while now. I don't know um, exactly how much you'd have to pay for this but this is a really great box set. Encounters in the Natural World. Now this um, I liked more. So I used to say for many years until recently that I, I was a big fan of Werner Herzog's documentaries. I mean as a documentary filmmaker once again they have his touch, they have his stamp on them or whatever. You can tell that he he's made made them his way. Um, certain things that he chooses to focus on and, and certain um, techniques he has in interviewing his in, in interviewing people and how he films them. Uh, he seems to thrive on this slight awkwardness to the conversations. He has said that he likes when his interview um, subjects looks into the camera not knowing how long they're supposed to look into the camera or why exactly they're supposed to look into the camera when they don't quite know what what they're doing th there's something about that uncertainty apparently that he likes so you'll see that a lot in, in his movies that he, both in his well perhaps especially in his documentaries but maybe in some of his other movies as well um, ca his his interview or the, the people in the movies they, they look into the camera sometimes for prolonged prolonged periods of time and uh, so that's one thing that I don't think a lot of people would do but uh, anyway this this um, box that contains Grizzly Man, the White Diamond and Encounters at the End of the World on Blu-ray uh, also has a few um, uh, bonus shorts uh, let's see um, La Soufriere and The Flying Doctors of East Africa uh, which I don't know what disc they're included on, but uh, well, yeah, on this one. Um, so these uh, documentaries I liked a lot more, and so for yeah, for a number of years I was I considered considered myself a fan of um, his documentaries, but not so much his feature films. And after this, I would sort of I guess I would focus on his documentaries more. Um, and um, <clears throat> I don't own all of his documentaries. He's done a couple on Netflix, uh, Into the Inferno, uh, and Lo and Behold, Reveries of the Connected World, I think it's called. Um, so I've seen those on Netflix, and I've seen maybe a few others uh, on YouTube and um, elsewhere. Um, but um, this is the this, this was the main bulk of documentaries that I um, knew him. Uh, what, that I that I knew from him, you know, and um, encounters at the end of the world and Grizzly Man in particular, I really liked a lot. I've still only seen these once, but now rewatching some of these and seeing seeing a bunch of them for the first time, I uh, really feel like rewatching some of these. Like my best fiend, I'd like to rewatch, but also these and um, a few others. Um, but yeah, uh, this is a great box set. Um, a few other ones that I have, uh, Cave of Forgotten Dreams, which I saw not too long ago, um, which was quite interesting. Not really one of my favorite documentaries from him. Um, here's one called Little Dieter Needs to Fly, which is a Swedish DVD. I remember when I found this, I didn't even realize that this was put out in Sweden, so I was pretty surprised to find this. So. This is a fun. I like this DVD. I like. Um, well, I, I'd like to hold on to that, even if, <laughs> um, 
even if it was included, let, let's say they had included that movie in this box set, I would have still be, been tempted to keep the DVD. Um, here's one that I am uh, regretting not enjoying more, which is a weir weird thing to say. I mean, if, if you don't like something, it's I guess there's not too much you can do about it. You can kind of wait and, and return to it um, later on and maybe get something more out of it, which is what I want to do, but this Lessons of Darkness, it's a uh, Region 1 DVD, so I can't uh, watch this at the moment, I only have a Region, well I only have a PlayStation 4, so I can't watch uh, American discs at the moment. Um, this also contains Fata Morgana, which I watched for the first time recently on that box set, so I'll get to that. But this is an interesting movie, I'd, I'd really, I really would like to watch this again. Um, he he almost turns real life into a science fiction film. There's very little very little narration and uh, context, and he just films uh, these um, oil burning oil fields um, in the aftermath of the Gulf War. I think most of us r would recognize those images of these uh, vast burning fields. So he kind of observes that, but doesn't give you a lot of context, and he kind of some somehow it it seems. Uh, alien, even though it's our planet and we know what's happening. So he, he creates a pretty cool thing with that. Um, but um, yeah. And then these two I haven't seen. Uh, Queen of the Desert, one of his most recent ones. This uh, is a Region 2 DVD, so I, I can watch it. I just haven't seen it yet. Uh, I haven't heard great things, so I guess that's why I haven't seen it yet. Um, this one I also found at a second-hand store, but once again it's a um, uh, region 1 DVD, where the green ants dream. Uh, I've never really heard anything about this. Um, it has an audio commentary with him, so I'm looking forward to watching the movie and listening to the commentary at some point. Um, but, um, you know, not quite yet. Um, okay, so I think, that, uh, th I, I think that's all, unless I missed one, but I don't think so. I think that's all that I had from before. So, after that, um, and after not having really focused too much on his movies, been aware of them and liked them, but not loved them, I I bought this, and uh, you know I'm I, I I you know it seemed like a no-brainer to do that, but I'm really glad that I did, and that I I found the time to watch all these because I've 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 now seen all of them except for uh, I didn't rewatch. Wojciech, I have, I, I have yet to, uh, to see that again, but everything else I've rewatched and listened to the commentaries, watched the special features, and then of course the ones that I'd never seen before I saw for the first time. So I think I'm gonna just briefly go through this. Um, so on disc one, Aguirre, Wrath of God, um, I can't tell, well I think I pretty much went through this in um, uh, chronological order, so there are a few shorts which I'm not really gonna focus on too much. But I, I saw I saw those. Uh, I started started with those. I kind of wanted to see how his career um, advanced because uh, he, st he started making these experimental um, shorts, and they're they're not great. I think out of these three, unprecedented defense, last words, and precautions against fanatics. I think maybe last words was my favorite one. Um, he's made a. F I think his first feature film is one that was called Signs of Life, which I've not seen. I've not been able to find that, and there's quite there's a few more that I that I haven't been able to to get yet. Um, but um, I think uh, I guess after that, Fata Morgana, uh, which is one that uh, was included on the Lessons of Darkness DVD. Uh, that's I think that's the one that I saw after those. And this is an incredible movie. This is, I understand why they included it in um, the Lessons of Darkness DVD because it also, in a similar way, without a lot of context, I think it, it's the is it the Mayan creation myth? It's uh, some kind of creation myth that they that you hear in the narration as you're watching these. Um, what's the English word for that? Um, mirages. You know, in the desert when the heat, I don't know exactly what it is that happens, but the heat makes the air look so thick that things kind of 
um, it, 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 it fucks with your brain, to put it um, nicely. <laughs> You, you you see things which aren't quite there. I mean, the classic example is the um, the, the the river or the the well, whatever water water in the desert, which turns out to be nothing. Um, so it sort of plays with that a bit, but it does something else too. It, it it shows a bunch of images without context from around the world, and it it it, it combines that with this, like I said, the uh, creation myth and then some Leonard Cohen songs and it sounds like a strange combination but there are some really wonderful moments in that and I th partly why it works I think is similar to the Lessons of Darkness movie because it almost feels like um, um, like an exploration of, of humanity fr from a place which doesn't necessarily feel human it sounds completely pretentious, but it's, it's some kind of investigation into our world where things are abstract enough to, um, to f once again, to feel kind of alien, uh, to feel that there's some, I, 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 don't, I don't know what it is. And um, I'm not, I, you know, I've listened enough to Werner speaking at this point, so I don't feel like that's a bad thing necessarily not uh, understanding or knowing what to make of some of his things because he doesn't really know himself he he often said when he gets questions about some things like why did you choose that oh i didn't choose that it just felt right i don't know why it's supposed to be there but it's supposed to be there and that's all he'll say and sometimes i feel that way too like i don't know why the ending of well i i've figured it out now i, I i've sort of come up with um what to me feels like a pretty clear interpretation but the ending of Stroshek to jump to another one but um, he said that about the ending of Stroshek there's a chicken at the, uh, you know I don't think it's spoiling anything really but a chicken dancing at the end of Stroshek and he was he said that about that like I, I'm not sure why but it's a metaphor for something and uh, he's totally right it, it really is and it, it uh, becomes something meaningful if you look hard enough. Sometimes you don't really know what that is. Um, but anyway. Um, okay, so I, I think Aguirre was the one that I would have seen next because it follows after uh, Fata Morgana uh, or Land of Silence and Darkness does, but I, I, I didn't rewatch that. Um, There's something about that which moved me deeply. I, I did own, uh, used to own the deep, well, I think I still own it actually, but it's in the, uh, the cell pile. Uh, this is a documentary about um, people who are uh, both um, blind and deaf, so literally land of silence and darkness. And there were a few moments in that movie which moved me to tears, and they, they moved me so deeply that I'm almost afraid to return to it, because I don't want the experience of re-watching it to be less than the first time I saw it, if that makes sense. But it's still pretty, still pretty vivid in my memory, so uh, I, I'm gonna save that. I'm not gonna watch that again quite yet, but that is a wonderful incredible documentary. It's sad, but it's it's a beauti beautifully sad um, Film um, Okay, so then Aguirre Wrath of God um, Yeah, uh, last time I saw it I just didn't get it and uh, I, I think I, I thought last time that I was missing something on a metaphorical level like something profound but I don't know. I don't know if that's why, if that's what I got from it now. That's not necessarily why I like it. I mean, it's it's an, it's it's um. I suppose to some extent a character study of this a megalomaniac played by Klaus, Kin Klaus Kinski, but it's mainly just the way it's filmed, and some of the individual scenes, which really moves me deeply, and uh, the way they filmed it on this in in the jungles of South America takes place in the uh, is it the 16th century uh, this Spanish exqui exqui what's the word exquisition <laughs> um, you know what word I'm looking for I, c I can't think of the word but this Spanish group of people um, looking for El Dorado and the plot doesn't really matter to me anyway it's it's the way they've captured the jungles the way the boat uh, travels along the rivers 
and some of the individual scenes which just it's something something else it really is a great great film so when i finally after after several years of not well of of knowing that i had seen it and not quite getting it i was happy to finally um finally do so which is um um yeah i mean it's it's great it's great when that happens when you've seen something in the past and you it didn't resonate you, you failed to see what it was trying to tell you um or you failed to find whatever within within yourself that it was supposed to connect with uh, and now you've put it aside for a number of years you've lived your life and you come back to it and you know ah i think i get it I, it 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 means something to me now i mean i guess you've wor worked worked for it a bit uh so that might be part of it but it's also just um I mean, the feeling of um, uh, falling in love with the film uh, is pretty hard to beat, I think, uh, as a film fan. But, um, yeah, then um, The Enigma of Casper Hauser. I think maybe I saw Stroh. I think at this point I didn't really move chronologically anymore. But uh, The en Enigma of Casper Hauser and uh, Strohschek, they're both with um, Bruno M. Was that his name? Uh, he's not an actor. You can tell when he's acting that he's not really acting. Well, I mean, he, he's not a professional actor. I prefer the Strohschek, if you want to. I mean, they, they, I guess because he was in both of them, I, I, seem, I seem to think of the two of them almost in tandem or, you know, t together. I mean, they're separate films, but uh, they feel kind of similar in some ways. I prefer Strohschek. The Enigma of Casper Hauser, though, is a really interesting story. I've known about this film for some time and I remember looking up not not too long ago I think um, and I'd heard about this before this man uh, in Germany I, I guess uh, who just turned up without um, you know people didn't know where he came from he didn't have seem to have a name he I don't think he could speak a lot he just kind of turned up and it was a big mystery and I think I was looking for mysteries at the time, <laughs> and and I found that, and I was like, wait a minute, that's, and I found out that that's what that movie is about. Now, I was super excited to watch that because I knew the story, be, um, what inspired it. And the story is um, really um, exciting and uh, kind of disturbing in a way too, because cause I, I don't know about you, but when when I hear about old stories that there's no there's no answer, there's no conclusion, uh, maybe Jack the Ripper is one of them, but that's more of a serial killer thing. But just kind of mysteries and stories and fables, and you don't know what's true or not, and you don't you don't know too much about it. Um, that that's always been somewhat ups upsetting to me, not knowing the answer, and because it's so long ago, um, it there's some kind of strange ethereal romanticism to it or something I, I don't know but um so the movie had a lot to live up to because i was bringing all this into it but it was still good uh although not one of my favorites um how much would would a woodchuck chuck uh i'm not gonna focus on that it's a documentary about um i think yeah i think i think that was the um well it, it, it was it was that, that was okay that was just okay. Um, Heart of Glass is interesting. Maybe, maybe the movie so far that I, that I've seen from him that I um, know the least what to make of it. The most his most mysterious, abstract, surreal movie, maybe uh, at least um, from my point of view. But the the opening and the ending are both really haunting. Um, but there's a lot of stuff which is kind of hard to get into with that one. But um, I did like it quite a bit. Uh, now Nosferatu, for some reason I, I maybe it's because it was a remake because I had seen the uh, Murnau film. You know, I was talking about not watching that movie from this box set. Um, maybe that was why I never wanted to see it. But uh, I have seen it now, and uh, you know I really liked it a lot. It is sort of a remake. But, uh, you know, it becomes its own thing, too. Uh, some great music, some great cinematography. Um, there's a sequence where there's a kind of plague. And um, you see 
the people uh, sort of dancing one last time before they die from the plague, which I think there's a ghost song, which is a completely unrelated topic, but there's a Swedish band called Ghost, and they have a song about that, I think. So it, it made me think about that song, like, one last dance before we die. And that scene is, is, that scene is played in total silence on this um, square, the town square. And that's a really incredible scene. Um, yeah. Uh, Wojciech, again, I haven't seen that since um, all those years ago. So uh, I can't really comment on that. Uh, Handicapped Future, I guess I would have seen that early on as well. One of the first ones that I saw. It's a short, shorter movie from 1970. Uh, Great Ecstasy of Wood Carver, Carver Steiner. Uh, Huey's Sermon. That's actually, I, I didn't see that. I, I did put it on. But it's it's literally that it's somebody's sermon, and I just I didn't really. F f it's the only one where I didn't feel like I really I really had a reason to sit through the whole thing. Um, Fitzcarraldo, a little film called Fitzcarraldo. Um, you could make a whole video about that movie, obviously. I mean, um, but yeah, it's um, this is maybe where what I said before of, of him being slightly insane where that can help him <laughs> Who else would do something like that? Transfer a boat, a steamboat, literally over uh, not maybe not a mountain, but a hill. Um, if, if you don't know the story, it's about this... Um, it's in, I guess, is it in... Uh, oh shit, is, is, it in, <laughs> is it in Africa or is it in South America? Obviously I should know that, but I don't quite know that. Uh, it's in the jungle though. Um, I'd guess that it's maybe in South America. I don't. I don't know, but there's a river. I'm sorry about the light here. Um, the the movie is about uh, Klaus Kinski. He plays this uh, this Western guy. He's in the jungle. He wants to find rubber or something for to for some kind of some kind of material that he needs to build his opera house, which he wants to build in the jungle. It's like a dream of his. And by the way, um, his the character of Klaus Kinski. The character he plays, his crazy dream, his impossible dream, you can you can pretty easily draw the um, comparison to Herzog, like he is that character with the film Fitzcarraldo, um, because what Klaus Kinski's character did is he had to find the materials which was at it was upstream, so he couldn't get his boat up the river, but the uh, parallel river the, the the river parallel to it, the stream was going the other way. So they went down this stream, and then the the mountain that connected, or that was in between them, they literally hauled the steamship over it, so that they could come on this side, downstream, and then park the boat, right here. And what Herzog did was literally move the ship over the mountain, or the hill. And so he did, in real life, what this crazy character in the movie had to do. So... <laughs> <laughs> he is that guy. Herzog is the character he's making a movie about, basically. And I think that's that elevates the movie just a little bit. So Fitzcarraldo is one of my favorites, which is not very very original. But it is pretty hard to uh, not have a good time with that movie. And then let's see, this one I was really glad that they included on this box set. Burden of Dreams. It is the uh, the making of documentary, uh, not by Her by Werner Herzog, but by Les Blank, um, who I'm I, I'm definitely interested in his other movies. There is a Criterion, I think both a Criterion release of this film, which I'd like to get because it has uh, uh, special features that I want to see, but there's also a crit Criterion box set of Ver v um, Les Blank's other films. Uh, maybe that box set contains all of the contents on the Burden of Dreams disc, so maybe I wouldn't have to get both of them. But I do I do want to get um, all of that content, because uh, this is a good documentary uh, about... I mean, this is an, 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 in, an infamous documentary. This is, all, well, not quite as famous as the film itself, but is a pretty notorious making-off documentary when you look up... Not that I've made... I don't know if I've done that, but if, if you do look up, like, best making-off or best movie documentaries making off a movie that is, you know, documented, then you'll probably find this. And there's definitely reasons for that, because I'll, if you're gonna do something like that, 
hold this ship over the mountain and um, etc. You just, just ha have these um, uh, native people uh, work, um, you know, all these uh, crazy decisions. Uh, there's probably going to be conflicts, and uh, as if there wasn't enough shit happening in this production, uh, it's pretty crazy all of the stuff that happens here. So that's documented in um, Burden of Dreams. Um, then we have Werner Herzog eats his own shoe, which I think is directed by Les Blanc as well. Um, this is about him. Um, he has a he, he's done a he's made a bet with somebody. I don't remember what that was, but he lost the bet. This might have had something to do with Errol Morris, the filmmaker Errol Morris. I'm not quite sure, but he uh, made a bet to eat, literally eat his own shoe, and so this short film films him cooking the shoe and then in front of an audience he tries to eat it. It's a pretty bizarre thing. Um, Cobra Verde, um, this one I actually started watching when I bought this box set, but I just didn't like it back then, so I turned it off. And so I saved this for last because I wasn't quite excited about watching it again because my initial experience with it wasn't very positive. But I, I ended up really, really quite liking this movie. It. Um, it has a similar feel. It, it could have been part three uh, to if, if Aguirre is part one. This crazy collaboration, um, exotic locations, um, etc. Uh, but this crazy uh, collaboration between Kinsi Kinski and Herzog. If Fitzcarraldo is part two, Corbe Verde it very much feels like part three. I mean, they had done a couple of the movies together, but none quite as. Um, uh, production-wise, as as ambitious and um, daring, I suppose, as this and those other two. So this felt like it could have been that, but it doesn't quite reach that point. It still is a lot better than I was expecting it to be. There are some really, really great shots in that movie. Um, and once again, he has all these extras, uh, which uh, creates a very cinematic um, film, of course. Um, but um, um, yeah, uh, I think maybe Kinski plays his most uh, nasty character in this movie, uh, possibly. Um, God's Angry Man. I thought that was a quite a, quite a good documentary. Uh, which, w I, well, okay, so it, it's about this. It's not really one of his most well-known films or anything, but it's it's about this man who's a uh, what's the word televangelist or something. He has this. TV show, which I don't, I, I don't know this stuff. This is not my area of expertise. But I guess in the U.S. you have or have had these channels where people um, are on air for hours a day. These tiny channels, um, and they're preaching, preaching their message. And this, this follows somebody like that uh, as he is running through. He's, he, he runs into trouble regarding financing i believe and stuff like that and uh it could he was the the um the, the character that um that it's about you know he was a really interesting kind of charismatic um guy and i was really curious about him but i thought that it was a shame that it was it, this this could have been a long film this could have been a feature length film they could have spent more time with this guy and I could be wrong, but I think it could have been a, a good feature-length documentary about this person. I also think that the decision to for uh, Werner to to narrate the uh, or to translate the spoken language of uh, English into German, because I guess this was a German production or it was it was intended for German audiences. So instead of having uh, subtitles, Herzog himself. Uh, verbally translates everything that they say, and so you you can't quite hear the English dialogue. You have to kind of settle for it becomes an odd viewing experience because you hear some of it in the background, but th then you have to read the English subtitles for the German translation for the English dialogue. So y you'd like to just listen to what they say, not have to read the the subtitles for the German. You, you kind of want to erase those two and just listen to the uh, the dialogue, but the, there's no audio option where you, where you could do that. So, and he, uh, I believe Herzog has done that more more at, uh, 
uh, on more occasions than this and that takes away from the viewing experience but to me that was an interesting um, um, documentary okay so that's that box set I also briefly want to touch on his audio commentaries which on this uh, well he, he not not just on this but I may be on some of these other ones too um, he, he, he seems to always do them with somebody named Norman Hill I have no idea who that who that is but um, he always does them with this guy Norman Hill and um, there are commentaries for you know Aguirre uh, Fata Morgana um, Casper Hauser I think uh, may, maybe Heart of Glass maybe not I'm not quite sure about that um, Stroshek um, not Nosferatu I, yeah Nosferatu and uh, Fitzcarraldo and Cobra Verde too so a bunch of do um, audio commentaries um, and they're really fun to listen to um, I I rarely listen to that that, that many I mean uh, I mean I, you know I, I love commentaries and I've, I, I've, I've become a bigger fan of them over the years and I, I probably 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 <laughs> listen to more of them now than I ever have before but um, to to listen to all of them and to really fully enjoy them, I mean, um, I don't think there's a lot of, of um, filmmakers who can keep you that entertained. There's just something about the way he speaks and what he says and the things he chooses to to focus on, whatever it, that that is just fascinating. So great, great box set. Um, this is a really good introduction to his films too, even though this is not the end. I mean, if you like stuff from this box set, there's plenty more that he's done. And now, as the final part to this, I'm going to talk about a few other things that I bought recently um, from him. So, first of all, <laughs> Salt and Fire. So this is where my loyalty to Werner Herzog as a director comes in because I would never have bought this movie if he hadn't directed it and um, be because this is apparently supposed to be quite a shitty film uh, which is a shame um, and which is interesting because he made these two if you remember I, I said that this wasn't supposed to be all that good either I think these were released, if not in the same year, then w within like a year of each other uh, or so, and th they're both c apparently quite quite bad. Maybe especially this one, but um, yeah, there's not really anything that <laughs> that he has directed that I'm not interested in. Um, <clears throat> and so, of course, I had to get this. This was just a cheap DVD. Um, but as you can see, the the cast is good. Um, so, and the, the director is good, and so so you want to think that this is a good movie, but it's it's not supposed to be. But uh, I will watch that eventually. I didn't feel like I needed to do that for this video, um, but I will do that at some point. Um, this one was interesting, The Wild Blue Yonder, a uh, science fiction fantasy by Werner Herzog. Once again, he does something similar to Lessons of Darkness and um, um, Fata Morgana, but with this one, it's actually a mockumentary. Um, Brad Dorif plays the main role uh, as this alien who's come to Earth, and apparently he knows, like he knows what he knows all the secrets to life, whatever he knows things that we don't, and. Um, he kind of talks to the camera about his experiences, his journey to Earth, and then um, how do you explain this movie? I I, I knew what what mm, I feel like I definitely prepared something to say about this one, but I it might have um, escaped me now. But he he uses I think he uses both archival footage and footage that he films himself. Um, and kind of, well, fuck. This was yeah. This this was a difficult one to talk about. But it, it is a um, it, it is it is another one where he kind of bends the expectations of genre 
and he um, he 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 experiments with um, with images. He he films stuff that is clearly filmed on Earth, but he but in the story they're supposed to take place on some other planet light years away, and um, it, it seems to be some kind of um, it seems to kind of ponder our existence, uh, humans, hu our place in the universe, our desire to uh, to find out why we're here, and wh whether that's necessary, maybe, or maybe that that last part is just me. But um, yeah, it seemed to be wanting to say to t touch on things like that. But there are f there there's more things that I I must say that I've probably forgotten. Um, that that I things that I wanted to say about this, but oh well, it is um, fairly interesting, but um, it never quite manages to reach um, a higher level. Um, like Fata Morgana works works much better, and I would say that Lessons of Darkness works much better too, even though I didn't like that quite as much when I saw that. But I'm pretty sure that I would probably get more out of it if I were to rewatch it. This is an interesting and pretty ambitious experimental film and um, it's not great but it certainly has promise to be, it, 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 it had promise to be great. Uh, it could have been but uh, it, it misses, I think it misses the mark but um, it is interesting enough to, to check out. I wouldn't say that I enjoyed it um, <laughs> but I'm glad that I saw it. Um, and uh, Brad Dorif, even though I, I think maybe Brad Dorif he didn't have, he, I mean, it's hard to say, but he had possibly a limited, l limited um, things to work with. I I wouldn't say that he's absolutely great in the film. I think other people would certainly disagree with that. But um, I think he was good, and he was well cast. But um, it, there are just a few things that doesn't quite work with the film. But um, anyway, it's certainly interesting. So here we have the um, actually the um, let's see. I I guess is this supposed to be this yellow, <laughs> or has this been um, sun faded or something? I'm not quite sure. I don't think it has. I think it's probably supposed to be like that. Yeah, I mean it's just it's yeah okay. Anyway. But I, I think this is um, the, uh, the 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 second volume, or maybe not. This says Herzog Kinski. This just says Werner Herzog. I think I was under under the impression because I knew that there was a second box set which looks similar to this one. I was under the impression that this was volume two, but maybe it's not really con um, considered to be volume two. But you can see that they are similar. Um, well, yeah. Well, these movies they they ha they don't feature uh, Kinski. Um, so I guess that's that's the difference. But any, anyway, um, I I I bought this now because of one film. Because the other ones, you can see, uh, there there's only one film here that I haven't talked about, um, and that is this one. Only dwarves started small, and you know I, I could have bought that separately, although I think the the separate release on Amazon it it had the same cover. This was the cover, so I don't know if if they literally would have just shipped me this slim case. So I didn't really want to risk that. I, I I rather just buy the whole box set and have the two of them together because they kind of look nice together. And uh, then I also have a reason to keep this, not just for my best fiend, but because they look nice together. Does that make sense from a collector's perspective? Anyway, I bought the box set for this movie. I think the box set was pretty much just as cheap as this would have been separately. But yeah, this is the one that I wanted to see from this set and um, I was not disappointed. This is... Um, um, there's there's certainly um, an analogy here, a metaphor for something which um, maybe I didn't quite get. Um, I got something out of it. But I, I, I especially just kind of had fun with this because yeah, even Dwarf started small. Um, all the actors are dwarves, and um, most of the film shows them kind of just fucking things up, just uh, causing mayhem, and <laughs> sort of having fun. It looks like the actors had a lot of fun making this, and so it's a 
to me this is an irresistible movie. It's a lot of fun. It's um, a really great film actually. And uh, certainly not one of his lesser movies. This might probably, it's probably in the top half. Well, I think it definitely is actually. Maybe not one that people talk about quite as much as the other ones. Um, but this was super fun. Like, I really liked this a lot. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I don't know, I don't really know what else I have to say about it, but I would really recommend checking this one out. Um, so, I guess that's the only one from this set that I had to uh, talk about. Um, and once again, I believe there is a commentary for, um, for that one. Then I have two more. Two more of his recent movies, American movies. Uh, Rescue Dawn. Um, this one had a, a similar feel to some of his other um, movies like Aguirre, Aguirre or Fitzcarraldo, but it's certainly not as good. I mean, when I say a similar feel, I I, I guess I, I mean in terms of um, um, location, uh, particularly. Um, I guess so, but um, it's um, yeah, it's a survival film. I couldn't quite make up my mind for a while if if I liked it or not. Like usually, that's not an issue. Usually, you kind of know if you like things or not. But I was I, I didn't really know what to make of it exactly. But it is um, it is quite good. I wouldn't I wouldn't be opposed to watching this again. And it's a really good Blu-ray too. There's a commentary once again. I think this is the latest. Uh, most of these other commentaries, they must have been recorded uh, earlier than this. This would have been a few years later, I think, but once again with the Norman Hill and the making off and stuff like that, so... Yeah. And then, finally, the one that I saw the most recently. Bad Lieutenant. Or it's known... It's Let's see if I can remember the title. Um, Bad Lieutenant... Port of Call, New Orleans, or something like that. It takes place in New Orleans. And I haven't seen the Harvey Keitel Bad Lieutenant. I don't know how similar they are, but I didn't feel like, I didn't get the impression that you had to know that film to know this one. Um, this is really a good, I mean, I, I'm glad that he went with Nicolas Cage. This was a good collaboration. Um, this is a pretty insane movie. It's a pretty funny movie too. Um, it's hard to know. Uh, I, most of Herzog's films, I guess they aren't, they, they wouldn't be considered funny or they wouldn't be classified as comedies. There are movies that are certainly funny, but for the most part they're, they're, they're more bizarre than they are funny, I think. This one is funny though. This is a, definitely a comedy. It felt pretty clear watching this, um, that Werner Herzog had some kind of intention to make this a comedy. Now, knowing what kind of character he is, it, it's hard to know if his idea of funny is the same as mine. In other words, if some of these scenes that I'm laughing at in the movie, if that was the exact intention, if, if, if the stuff that I'm laughing at and why I'm laughing at it, if that's what he wanted, so to speak. Um, I don't th I don't really think that matters. I think that adds another fun layer to it. Uh, a layer of Herzogian bizarre humor, which is just kind of fun. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. Uh, speaking of the... Um, it's pretty interesting. He, speaking of the chicken dance in Stroshek, he remakes that in this. There's a scene where somebody dies, and then his, I think, what is it? His soul is still dancing. Somebody spots, oh wait, his soul is not dead. His, so his soul is dancing. And they play the same music um, as, in the as, in, as, in, as in that sequence in Stroshek with the chicken. So it's obviously a callback to that scene. So that was pretty interesting, and so scenes like that, his soul is still dancing, and then literally he's bre break dancing on the floor. Um, also adds a layer of kind of surrealism to it. There's not not really a lot of those scenes, but there are a couple of, of those scenes. 
But, um, I mean, even with a movie like this, um, with Nicolas Cage and Eva Mendes, he still has his own field. He still makes the movie his way. Um, I think if you were to go into this having no idea who Werner Herzog is, just watching this because it looks like... I mean, I don't mean to have... Um, what's the word? To be stereotypical or judgmental. But let's say you're an American who mainly watches American movies. And uh, maybe you mainly pay attention to actors. Um and you watch this for the actors and not knowing who the director is. I think you would be a little bit put off by this because it definitely is a weird movie. Um, although maybe fans of Nicolas Cage wouldn't be too surprised. I don't know. But anyway. Um, so this this was a, a unique movie. Even is I think even even in Werner Herzog's even for his standards it, it was still unique for him. Um, and I wasn't expecting that really. I wasn't expecting to see something completely different. Well, maybe I, well, I don't know if I was expecting it, but I, I definitely did see something uh, completely different in this film as to what I've seen in, in, in his other movies. Anyway, so that's the ramble. I guess ramble is over. So I, I guess this turned out pretty well. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, you know, I've been pretty obsessed with Werner Herzog for some time now especially since, um, you know, having my renaissance of watching his movies, re-watching his movies and watching the other ones for the first time and and all that, but... Um, um, but... Um, and, 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 and so... What was I gonna say? Well, and, and, and so I am a big fan. And there's a lot... Uh, he's such an interesting guy too that there's so much to say. I'm sure I've missed something, even though I've rambled on for, well, I don't know how long, but well over half an hour, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. But there are things that I have definitely missed. Um, but um, th this is going to have to do. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Werner Herzog. Now, this um, um, is a f kind of video that I, I don't really know if I'll get the opportunity to make a lot of other times, because... I had such a unique, and I have had such a unique experience with this director, and because he's such a unique filmmaker, because he's made so many films, so many documentaries, so many feature films, or so many, you know, live action films, so many short films, and he's done them in his own way, and uh, he continues to work. Uh, he has a few things coming out now, and a few things in pr production. He's just a unique character, and it's it's hard not to have a unique relationship with this director. And so, I don't know if I'll get the chance. Now, I don't think a lot of people is, are, are gonna watch and and like this video. But if there are a few people, then then good. But um, I don't even even if this would video were to be um, appreciated, I don't I don't know at this point who else I could make this video about. I feel like I. I need to re-familiar myself quite a bit, or familiarize myself quite a bit with a director before I can do something like this. Uh, otherwise I'll feel like I don't have enough to say. And I don't think there are too many directors that I know well enough that I, that I can feel confident to make a video like this. I wish there were. I just don't think there are quite a lot. Or uh, I don't think there are really. Um, so this might be a, a one-off one thing. But, um, anyway, um, yeah, well, if you're listening to this and if you've seen the whole thing, then I, I really do appreciate it. And, um, yeah, I'm gonna continue watching Werner Herzog's movies. There's a few that I haven't seen. I, there's a few that I'd like to get on DVD. The, 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 there's one called Invisible, or Invincible, sorry, I think, uh, which I still have to get on DVD. And there's one called Scream of Stone, maybe? You know, they're, they're not supposed to be great, but I still want them. Uh, and there's, uh, well, Signs of Life is one, and there's something else. Well, I don't own, I'd like to own Lo and Behold on Blu-ray, so I'm still kind of trying to find that. And, oh, Into the Abyss is one that I've seen, but I don't own it, and I have only seen it once, so I'd like to get that on Blu-ray, preferably on Blu-ray, and rewatch it. I think there's a documentary series on Death Row or something like that, which is on DVD as well. 
which I'd like to get and uh, maybe there's something else too. So there's a few more that I need to get and there are a few more that I have uh, on my playlist in U on, on YouTube that I uh, have yet to see. Um, yeah, and th there are others that I haven't talked about here that I've seen, but I, I guess I don't own them and so there wasn't really a good time to talk about them and now it's just the video has gone on, gone on for too long. But, um, <clears throat> yeah. Now I'm gonna go see Avengers Endgame in the movie theater. So, uh, wish me luck. And, um, yeah, talk to you later.